Good morning, Wesley families. Happy Sunday to you. Miss Christina here with this week's children's message. And now is the time for the children to come forward. <laughs> All right. Happy Easter season to you. I hope you had a wonderful first week of Easter and are ready for the second week of Easter season. <laughs> now today, I'm going to stretch the beliefs of your imagination. Okay. Now, what if I were to tell you I am going to take these two paper clips, separated paper clips, and connect them. Not only that, I'm going to connect them using a dollar bill. Do you believe me? Hmm. Well, let me show you and stretch the limits of your belief. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to fold the dollar into thirds. Okay. Then I'm going to take the first paper clip. Clip it on right there. Okay. Then I'm going to take the second paper clip and clip it on. All right. So what's your final answer? Do you believe me that I'm going to connect two separated paper clips using the dollar bill? Ready? Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. I did it! Now, if you didn't believe me before, you might believe me because you saw it, okay? Today's lesson is all about, you know, seeing is believing, but how we can still believe even if we don't see something, okay? So today's story, we know that Jesus has been crucified and has risen on Easter. Um, and today we're going to talk about that first Sunday after Jesus was crucified. All right. The disciples were really, really nervous and scared about the people who had crucified Jesus. And they were huddled in a locked room. Mind you, I said locked. They were all in this locked room, all except one disciple who was not there. That was Thomas, who was not there. But the rest of them were huddled in this locked room. And all of a sudden, Jesus appeared to them. All right. They saw him and Jesus showed him, showed them the wounds in his hand and in his side so that they would know it was him. Seeing is believing, right? Um, but then, like I said, one of the disciples, Thomas, was not there. He later earned the nickname Doubting Thomas <laughs> because the following Sunday, all of the disciples were locked in that room together. And the other disciples had told Thomas, we've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus. He's, he's risen. He's with us. And Doubting Thomas was like, how is that possible? I saw him crucified. I saw him buried. How that's not possible. I need to see to believe it. I don't believe you. I haven't seen it. But sure enough, that second time when they were all in that locked room together, Jesus appeared again. And um but before he did, Thomas had told the other disciples, "You know what? Unless I see the wounds in his side and in his hands and put my fingers in the holes where the nails were, I don't believe it. But then Jesus appeared, right? And Thomas was there and Jesus went right to Thomas and said, put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe, right? Thomas fell to his knees and said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. Now, how do we not see something and still believe it? That requires a lot of trust and, and you know, understanding of the way things work, right? Now, one way that you can think about this at home I came up with an acrostic poem. That means you write a word down the side and put separate words that relate to this word on the side. So on the edge, I wrote the word believe, and then I added some words to help me 
really think about why and how I believe in Jesus and Jesus' love, even though I've never seen him. He lived thousands of years ago, right? Um, but how I still believe things like his bold love for us, his bold activism, um, how his love is eternal and his word is eternal, how he, he is loving to everyone, his love is indescribable. We can't, we can't find the words. And his love is everlasting. His voice still resonates within our bodies through the Bible, right? Through the Bible's words. And his love and message is for everyone. So I encourage you, if you want to think about how you can believe without seeing, try an acrostic poem and see what you come up with. You'll be surprised. <laughs> All right, let us pray. Dear God, help us to believe in our heart the truths that we find in your holy word, even though we have not seen them with our own eyes. And all God's children say, Amen. Now, I thought a fun fitting song for this week would be Jesus is my best friend, okay? If you remember this one or know this one, sing along. But I thought I would sing it for you today. And it goes like this. I've never seen his face. I've never heard him speak. But Jesus is my best friend. I've never held his hand. We've never played a game. But Jesus is my best friend. When I'm feeling troubled, he is there. Jesus goes with me everywhere. Before I go to bed at night, I tell him all my prayers. And Jesus is my best friend. We share all my secrets. He knows me inside out. And Jesus is my best friend. He's happy when I'm happy. He helps me when I'm sad. Jesus is my best friend. When I'm feeling troubled, he is there. Jesus goes with me everywhere. Before I go to bed at night, I tell him all my prayers. Yes, Jesus is my best friend. Have a great week, everybody.